Well, let's let's kick it off, guys. Yeah. Um, welcome to, uh, I don't know if it's Stocks and Socks or Socks and Stocks, but welcome. It's great to have you on for the second time, even though this is the first time it'll go live. Second time great round, yeah. yeah. Great to be here. And how are Thanks you for both? having us, Matt. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for coming, uh, coming again. Alec, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I am locked down and uh, you know, like everyone, just, you know, got a lot locked of time in my house. <laughs> locked down and lonely. Yeah. No time well, for got, painting up. Yeah. It's, we were saying before, it's good advertising space. We might sell it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get? What could, what could you put there? I don't know. Does steak want to buy it? <laughs> I think we're already Is advertising it? through this podcast or this <laughs> this, this true true. This maybe I'm sure it's like I'm sure it's at the banner maybe, underneath. Maybe Comsec want to buy it. Yeah, I'll like, <laughs> they can have it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and Bryce, what about you, buddy? How are you? I'm well, Matt. Also locked down, but uh, enjoying the time uh, that we have. The more time we have to spend uh, looking at stocks, working on equity mates, um, engaging with our community, I think, um, you know, the silver lining is that we're able to do some things uh, that we would otherwise not be able to do in normal times. So um, t- like making, the mo- making the yeah. most of it like this. <laughs> your, hair, your hair looks like you've actually had a cut or you've been looking after it. Do you want to give us a bit of a, give us a uh, update? Matt, it's funny you <laughs> mentioned that. Um, I actually haven't done anything to it today. So you're looking at it in natural. Yeah, right, what do you it's, reckon? It's just compared to the mess that's your hair, Matt. <laughs> Mate, this is why you have speakers. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... Um, uh, yeah, I don't want to get started with my hair. It's just a recipe for disaster. <laughs> I guess we'll throw it back to you. How are you going? I'm good. I'm good. It's um, obviously really interesting times. It's really, you know, um, with the family at home, I've got three kids, so it's pretty busy. But, you know, we're fighting through and I, people are doing a lot tougher. Both my parents actually had coronavirus. Oh, uh, really? Which is insane. Yeah, coming, they're in London. My sister lives there. So that was pretty full on. They're in their late 60s. So, it's, you know, they're sort of at risk age but um they went full lockdown now i hadn't seen them for three months because they were away in london for two wow. months and then a month like isolating but uh they've come through which they're lucky and you know like there's been a lot of terrible stories out there so i'm, I'm sort of blessed wow. to, you know, they did, got did they that. was it a severe case or like how um the, the way my dad described it is it wasn't as like this is his experience so it's like it could be completely different for someone else um, the biggest thing for them was they, they did have, you know, fever and symptoms, but the biggest thing was actually the, the worst or the most memorable thing was actually the loss of taste and smell for two weeks. Yeah. Right. Um, oh. So that's probably why was, they could probably live with each other, the loss of smell. <laughs> um, I don't know if that will, uh, that, that, hopefully we edit that. Um, <laughs> no, but they're, they're doing well, thank God. It was good. Um, no, but it's fine. I mean, it's obviously just a, you know, it's really unusual. I'm starting to feel like Australia is slowly coming out a little bit. You know, people are mm, talking about mm. going back to school. That's, and... that's the risk. That's the risk. Yeah. We think we're okay. We come out too early and that's when it gets us. Yeah. Well, I mean, it looks, I don't know enough. I'm not a health specialist. So I'm just sort of going by. I'm just going to be follow the leader sort of thing. So whatever mm. I get told, I'm sort of going to follow um, in yeah. terms of this. But Bryce, um, Bryce actually, Bryce saw what was going on in the US and wanted to replicate it. He wanted to go protest. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get what a Confederate pro- flag. Don't against? tread on me. Like all the US protesters protesting the lockdown. Yeah, it's this like funny you see a guy with a mask and be like, it's a lie. It's like, well, why are you wearing a mask? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no, it's, uh, it's funny stuff. So, Bryce, what would you protest? Alex absolutely telling Porky's here. I would <laughs> oh, not really? be protesting anything. <laughs> to be honest, I'm just looking forward to the, the, the moment where we can actually all get outside and uh, have a beer together. So um, absolutely, I'd be protesting the uh, easing of restrictions more than anything. But <laughs> look, look, to your point, I'm no medical professional. So um, I think what we have at the moment is pretty decent. But I think now we're starting to really see the news turn to the economic fallout yeah. more than we are hearing about sort of the medical side of things. And today you see Virgin going to yeah. an administration mm-hmm. and oil absolutely going into uncharted negative territory. For the first time in history, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, 
So um, it's going to be, I think last time we spoke, we were still very much in pretty turbulent markets and it feels like it's somewhat calmed down a little. Mm. Still unsure. We recently did an episode on whether or not uh, this is the old bull trap scenario or when we did a bit of a walk down history lane to understand a bit about bull traps and, and what they mean. But uh, it feels like, yeah, now we're starting to see real economic fallout. So you being a trader, Matt, and <laughs> getting your charts and lines out, are we yeah. in a bull trap or what? <laughs> it's, a, it's a real funny one. You know, it's like the rally that no one believes in, which sort of means it extends further in a way because everyone had sold and no one wants to get short again. So it's just sort of trickled back up. Um, I don't know. I'm starting to feel like sentiment's gone. Like it was like when people are very, very bullish again, it's like when it dips, I think you're just starting to see people get a little more comfortable. And, but now you're actually seeing the long tail of the fallout. Like, you know, Virgin going into administration is massive. I don't know what else can actually happen. Um, in terms of, you know, if it will still be operating, obviously it wants to keep operating, but like that's 16,000 jobs, the amount of commerce that happens around it, the logistics, even for like something like Sydney airports, you know, to lose a massive tenant, you've only really got two tenants. Like mm. It's just the flow on impacts of these things. And, you know, Big time. but the market always prices in advance. So, um, it's got to have very stop, short, very tight stops. I think at the moment, um, uh, with whatever you're doing long and short, because, um, They've got to be based on the volatility, like it's more volatile. So you've got to take into account like where your stop levels are. But I think uh, if you don't have a very clear strategy, you're going to get um, hurt and whipped around a bit. So What's it called? The the average day? ATR, average to range. ATR. So average what that does is it measures yeah. the, the absolute, it's a measure of volatility. It measures how much stocks you know, or an instrument is moving on a daily basis on average over a period. And because it's got more volatile and then a little bit less volatile, that range has expanded, so your stocks have taken into account that. You know, you wouldn't have a, um, a stock that doesn't really move. You wouldn't have a, you know, let's say it moves a dollar a day. You wouldn't have a ten dollar stock, but a stock that moves, you know, on average six dollars a day, maybe you would have a ten dollar stock. So mm -hmm. you just got to take into account the actual instrument you're trading. But you know, it's always about having so a strategy and doing that. So can we take that as you're now buying back into the market, or no, no, no not at all. I mean, I'm actually short here. Oh yeah, just uh, wow. mm, just that rally back. It's like I saw volume decreasing. I mean, I could be totally wrong, but um, I've got to stop in place if I am. So, well, I um, had a lot of making money. Yeah, well, speaking of making money, I almost fell off my chair the other day because <laughs> Alec, um, Alec is a big proponent of uh, buying and holding for the long term, building wealth. I mean, we both are really. That's what equity yeah. makes is all about, you know, building and developing wealth over the long term, but. He'd recently bought a few leveraged ETFs. Wow! Um, both both in for yes. access to the states and and here and um, bought them at I guess the right time and made some decent Nailed gains the on them and wow. sold <laughs> them. He sold them. Wow! <laughs> You're making money yeah. on selling. That's amazing. Do you want That's to tell it. us about That's that? That's it. Uh, yeah. So I bought uh, I bought a leveraged S and P 500 ETF and a Ooh. leveraged ASX 200 ETF. About so one of those is on stake, I assume. Uh, neither on stake, unfortunately. <laughs> Ouch! Ouch, yeah. that's fine, that's fine. Um, Aussie dollar denominated, you know. I didn't, didn't want to take into account, account the currency risk. Uh, this but, is where Matt hangs up. No, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> customer this feedback, why, it all matters. <laughs> this is why I'm getting a rival broker on the wall behind me. Yeah. Look what happens to people that don't trade on stake. Look at their house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Burn. So um, <laughs> we we made the trade. Uh, I made a trade um, about six weeks ago. Uh, wrote it up, and then uh, as Bryce said, we released an episode on uh, the market uh, potentially being a bull trap. And I want to say, since we released that episode, the market's fallen. The ASX 200's fallen five percent. So maybe timed it perfectly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. wow. That's, a, that's really impressive. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> looking at history... Uh, I'm still in shock. Sorry, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you got the trade right, but that's fine. <laughs> Look, looking at... I'm just going to power through this. <laughs> <laughs> looking at history, what, what, we, um, what you see in a lot of these market crashes is an initial market crash and then 50% uh, retracement. So 50% uh, of the fall is recovered by the market and then a further fall where it 
test the previous lows mm. and most of the time breaks through that previous low. And so we had seen an initial 30% fall uh, in the S&P 500. It was like 1150, uh, 1,150 points. And then the market had risen about 20% from there, about 600 points. And I was looking at that. I was looking at history. I was looking at the fact that the health crisis was still going on. The liquidity had, position. We have record. <laughs> yeah, I wanted some cash as well. We'll get to that later, yeah. I'm sure. Um, we have, you know, we have record unemployment. We have oil yeah. falling. It wasn't negative at that point. We have, you know, companies talking about needing to shore up their balance sheet to survive the next few months. And yet we had stocks hitting all time highs, like some particular stocks hitting all time highs. Yeah. And for me, I couldn't square that. And so I made the, the decision to take what I'd earned uh, and also to just have some dry powder in case the market falls again and there are yeah. some serious buying opportunities. That's and Bryce amazing. was outraged. Outraged, wow. Well. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't outraged. I was Oh, you were pretty shocked. outraged. <laughs> shocked. Is that, is that a, uh, like a way of saying you were jealous? No, no. Look, Matt, yeah. I'm... I am yeah, one yeah. to I am one to sell stocks. I've never <laughs> shone You're away. To sell stock. <laughs> Leverage I've ETFs are not away. meant to be traded long term, right? Uh, so these these ones that we bought are are not your standard. Uh, you know, trying to reflect the day to day movements, but mm. slip over the long term. They're actually more old school. The ETF provider goes and gets a loan and just and buys yeah. more um, actually like contracts. on leverage. Yeah. So no options or anything like that. So that, that was why these ones were attractive to me, but I still only held them for a couple of weeks in the end. Amazing. Well done. Respect. Thanks, mate. Rips. It's, Thanks a, for it's, money. it's a, it's a silver lining in a portfolio that has, uh, that has <laughs> suffered the last few months. Yeah. Now all we need is the bull, um, the bull trap to come off and we're going to look like the bloody oracles of, I know. <laughs> <laughs> or this will be the low and we're just going to go on a massive bull run and we'll look like idiots. But, yeah. you know. No, I mean, look, probably not the first, gains. Probably not the first time we've looked like idiots in the last three years of doing this podcast. So true, we can get true. used to it. No, well done. That's really cool. Uh, Bryce, what do you reckon of that, that trade? Have you followed suit with anything similar? I have followed suit in terms of um, trade ideas and jumping in on... Um, exposure to both uh, the US and, and Australia, but I got in a couple of weeks before Alec did and then around the similar time. Um, so the ones that I got in a bit earlier than Alec obviously have been a bit blown out of the water because we, we, I, I had a, a bit of a strategy of if the market fell 10%, I'd buy in. If it fell another 10%, I'd buy in and kind of just work my way down and then equally work my way back up as the market goes back up. Um, so I lost a bit when the market continued to fall and subsequently we've had conversations with the likes of yourself, Matt, and a number of other experts, um, through the show. And it kind of feels like to me that, yeah, we, we are still in some, some sort of high volatility and, uh, mm -hmm. to Alex's point, there's a lot going on from, from a macro standpoint that just doesn't really match up with what's going on in the market. Yeah. So, um, I haven't sold anything. Alec, um, I have just uh, maintained my positions, but I was originally going to buy in every month over the next sort of four or five months to just, you know, not try and pick the market, but get as much capitalism in as I can now, but um, have revised that and I'm going to be sort of moving it out to maybe quarterly at this stage, yeah. just to make sure that, you know, the, the volatility is, is um, subsides a little and we probably get a bit more clearer direction of yep. where the economy is going both here and around the world. Yeah. You saw Elliott Funds Management, that's Paul Singer. He, he, uh, he released a statement saying he sees it, you know, towards a 30 to 50% drop from here. Did you guys read that article? No. So no. Elliott's a really large fund that does yeah, all yeah. sorts of things. He's actually pretty active in government bonds and he took Argentina. He, uh, you know, during the, the debt crisis, yeah. he was pretty involved. Like he's quite active. Um, I think his take was, you know, that they see after the after that recovery rally, of, you know, I think it was fifty or thirty percent drop from there. Um, but based on what? I, wonder, 50 I, just, I just think yeah. that. But the, the thing, yeah. The, well, the thing is, if you look at the long term uh, 
PA, like the long-term average PA of the S&P 500, uh, and you look at where the market, the S&P 500 was in February, it had to fall 56% just to get in line with its long-term average. Mm. And it had to fall like 70 odd percent to fall one standard deviation below it. Like the market was heavily overpriced and like it, what, it fell 30%. So it didn't even fall back to its long-term average in that yep. first fall. That's not necessarily a, a catalyst for it to fall though. Like I'd, be, I'd wonder why what Singer is saying. I think his, 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 yeah, his feedback was more along the lines of like the actual impact from this is just enormous and the flow on impacts right. and the unemployment and mm. you know, probably all the things you're thinking about. So uh, look, it was a very high, I, I didn't, I just read an article. So, you know, not like I know all the details, but um, it seemed to align with what your thinking was, Bryce, which I find strange. You say I'm holding, but I get a sense the market's going to drop. Is it because you don't want to be active or you just believe I can buy and it doesn't matter if it goes back up because I'll be. Yeah. There. Yeah. I mean, if I sold what I have already bought in this last period, a couple of them would be selling at a loss because I jumped in. Why you know, does that in matter? That for, uh, because my belief and what I've learned from history is that mm. not always, but inevitably this should recover to some, yeah. some point higher than what I bought them at. Yeah. Um, and I'm not in a position where I need that cash to buy more. Yeah. I still have money on the side to put into the market. So, I mean, I've, I've bought things like Macquarie when, you know, it fell to 70 bucks, just mm. seemed like a, a no brainer. Um, so I've bought into some specific stocks like that, but um, I'm not using this opportunity to try and make a quick buck. Let's yeah. put it that way. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, they call Macquarie. I mean, when I was going through uni and trying to get a gig afterwards, did I, I think I may have told you this last time, it's called the Millionaires Factory where it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So is that what yeah, you're Yeah, it's funny, I'm on? a millionaire now. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you just own a silver donut, one of the two. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, saw a, um, a chart the other day, Matt, that just showed the extraordinary growth in funds going into ETFs at mm. the moment um, and wondered if you'd been seeing that through stake, a big sort of transfer within accounts or, you know, new money coming in as, you know, it seems like every man and his dog at the moment want to be getting in to the st in stocks and yep. one way is through ETFs. Yeah. Oh, look, it's, it's amazing that, you know, we've got a full, you know, it's a brokerage. So people buy ETFs. Some just want to hold USD. Some want to buy, uh, Netflix has been on a tear. Amazon's, you know, these are, you know, year if not all-time highs. I know Netflix all-time high. Companies like Teledoc, uh, DocuSign. Um, you know, oh, yeah. people have been buying Just electronic arts and Activation Blizzard. Mm. Coronavirus so, exposed stocks. Yeah, so they're like, this is the way. This is a, you know, like this is the way the world's going to operate from now. Um, some have been looking at like I and O and some of the, you know, like J and J, Johnson Johnson and. Um, it was the other day, Merck, I think. Um, well, no, Gilead announced they had like a treatment. So people are jumping on. So people are doing all sorts of different things. ETFs, it's actually been more about the exotic and uh, inverse ETFs, actually. Mm. Um, you know, people that want to play the market generally, like, and I'll be totally transparent, like what, exactly what Alex did. If you're going to buy an ETF, there's probably no re unless it's a certain ETF you can't get exposure to in Australia, you'd probably just do it locally. Um, you know, the currency conversion, you know, if it depends if it's hedged or not locally, but if you want access to the S&P 500, like I'll, it's obviously not amazing advertising for stake, but you can do it locally. You know? <laughs> no, so, but I think, I think the, the thing about stake is that there's no uh, transaction costs. So that, that you know, uh, cost that you incur every time you're trading with other brokers isn't there. So yep. you're obviously going to have a, you, like there's a selection bias, like you're going to have people that want to trade in and out of positions mm. uh, rather than people who just want to buy three ETFs and hold it for the next 40 years. Yeah, no, definitely. And look, as I say, like, you know, you know our proposition, it's just access to the US. So if you can get that exposure here, there's probably no need. Um, yeah. it, it's more the names that I spoke about and some of those ETFs you can't access. So that's probably what more we've been seeing, but that's pretty normal. Um, a lot of people have moved into cash and that's I think, yeah. part of their strategy. And that's obviously the Aussie dollar as well as like, you know, I remember when we started state, the Aussie dollar was at 90 and it was at 85, it was at 80. And then people were like, it's got to go back to a buck. And then it's like 75, 70, 65, and it was down to 56. And then I think it hit towards 55 a few weeks ago. Yeah. 
and I think it's a 63 right now. So, I mean, that's yeah, a ride in itself. USD. Yeah, I often think about when there was parity and just regret <laughs> not, just <laughs> not doing something about what it. What would you have time. done? It's gone heavy into the US, moved we to were, the US. <laughs> when we at uni, we would have had like 60 bucks in our account. Hey, take it <laughs> out of would be worth like $3 million now. <laughs> yeah. True. True. yeah. No, when I was Imagine, working in the US, it was a, a buck. Um, yeah. yeah. When I came back, it was like a dollar four. Like, it was. Imagine if, if you bought at the US at that time, because not only did you get the great exchange rate, but you also got uh, the 10 years of the uh, S&P bull, bull run that happened after it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a, in relative terms, <laughs> yeah, they smashed it. But, yeah. You know, I don't think you'd be doing these sort of interviews if you had that insight. No, no, no. I'd be doing it in a full <laughs> You would not be spending not, time with not, me. Not on a brick wall behind me. <laughs> 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 um, how about your community? Obviously, your, your community, they obviously intersect as well. But, you know, in general, what's been happening on your side? To be honest, I think <clears throat> I, I was a bit nervous that when all this started to happen, you know, six or seven weeks ago because there was a, there was a real risk that everyone um, turned against us uh, and sort of said, <laughs> what, the, what the hell have you guys been telling us for the last three years? <laughs> I've just lost all my money. Um, but... It's the complete opposite of that, really. We're, we're just seeing so much interest and excitement in the market now. And, um, you know, people are really looking to, I guess, use this time at home to think more seriously about getting into, this, into the markets. And, yeah, the community is just buzzing with questions and ideas and um, obviously all around the ETF sort of vibe. And, and, but, you know, a lot of interest in, well, what happens when a company goes into administration like Virgin or you know, Qantas versus Virgin, that sort of stuff. Mm. Um, so it's, it's awesome to see. And um, yeah, it's, it's going really well. So oh, great. thankfully, we still have a community at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing with like dartboards and people throwing. No, no, not no. that we're aware of, unless they've started some <laughs> private group elsewhere yeah. and uh, <laughs> we're not involved in that. Although okay. Bryce is getting a lot of criticism from the community the last few weeks, his audio quality has taken a serious decline <laughs> since we're <laughs> working thing. from home. I know he needs one. Of Get it on. Make it happen. So I think uh, he owes our community an apology at some point for uh, yeah. for really well, you know, dropping the quality. That's just because I haven't been recording underneath a blanket like Ren has. <laughs> Oh, you you got to do what you got to do. But I think that's more because he's freezing inside his jail cell so yeah. just there. <laughs> I think if you spend a little bit less on lamps and on a microphone, yeah, yeah, the yeah, issue yeah. would be dealt with. Stop, stop Lighting is chairs. everything. <laughs> Lighting is everything. All right. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, we gotta, we got to talk about the big news of the day, which is uh, oil went negative for the yes. first time ever. Yeah. Um, what, what are you guys... What do you guys think? And especially you, Matt, like, are you, are you trading oil or oil exposed stocks or anything like that at the moment? It's mayhem. I mean, that, that was the futures and they're not that accessible really. So um, I really don't know enough to comment in detail and I'll be totally honest about that. But what I do know is that um, filling up my car was a lot cheaper. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I got petrol for under a hundred cents a litre. I mean, they should be paying us, right? <laughs> the way I look at it. It's like take this from us because, like, you need someone to store it. I'll store it in my car, and I don't know. That to me I, is the trade. Saw, but no one seems to buy that one. I saw an I saw an Instagram post of an arbitrage opportunity, and it was like the rent in Manhattan, the square footage you can get, and then uh, the amount of oil that you could get at the negative price, and it was like. It would make sense to just store a whole bunch of barrels of oil in your Manhattan apartment at that price. It's fascinating. I mean, you yeah. look like you've got space there. Uh, yeah, I've got a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> just pin it to the wall. Um, what I've been know. reading about today is, um, and to be honest, this is something that I wasn't aware of, but a lot of people, I guess, inexperienced buying particular ETFs um, to get exposure to oil, they actually come with an obligation at the end of the day that you could need to take ownership of that oil if the underlying i guess contract or whatever it is is not handed over or expires and apparently there's this issue at the moment now of all these juniors 
who are now being like getting knock on, knock on the door, being like, mate, you've got oils of um, barrels of yeah. oil that you need to find a that, place that to store. The, that would be the futures market. <laughs> I have, I've got a mate, and it's a true story. He started trading, and you know, uh, he started trading pork bellies, um, and he had to get make delivery of like a pork bit, like a like a certain quality of pork bellies. <laughs> um, and like he got a call from his brokers, like you got to roll this position, otherwise you got to deliver pork bellies in Philadelphia. Um, <laughs> crazy it's like something out of a movie it's uh crazy. yeah the futures market is uh, you know it's actually there to hedge instruments and yeah industry. i mean that's mm. the point of it mm. yeah. yeah 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 people just use it to speculate we, have, we actually had a listener today um hit us up on instagram saying that they think it might be an uh, a time for an equity mates experiment where we actually buy a barrel of oil and document the process of what happens to it <laughs> definitely <laughs> starting awesome. in your lounge room wrench yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That would be great. Right. Yeah, nice. I mean, look, it's the issue is storage, right? So mm. people don't want to maintain it. The demand's not there, and it's, it's cost. It costs people money. It's, it's you know, it's space that you need to be paying for. So that's probably why you know the future. Everyone just didn't want to be taking delivery of oil. They'll, yeah. They'd rather pay away the price to store it than to actually take delivery of it. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. it it's crazy that a week after the largest oil production cut in history with OPEC and Russia agreeing to cut 10% of their production, biggest ever, that they that we then saw it go into negative. Like the demand shock mm. of coronavirus has been so much that the largest production cut in history couldn't even stop it going mm. negative. You know, it is amazing. I mean, I was trying to think of it. You can actually get it in equities. You just don't see it. But ultimately, if a business is in a position where it doesn't. It, it actually wants to get rid of itself. It's basically paying another entity to take it. It's actually quite similar to that. You see that in the private market sometimes. It's like I buy your business, but actually I get paid to take it. It's essentially a similar situation. Mm. So, so yeah. So I, I've got a contrarian uh, investment idea on on the back of all of this. Like one of the biggest and hardest hit, uh, I guess, sectors of the oil industry will be the American shale oil industry that has just had an unbelievable run for the last few years. Um, America's become a net exporter of oil, but their cost per barrel to produce oil is far higher than Russia and Saudi Arabia yeah. and the rest of it. So in theory, they should be the first to go under. But you could make a massive contrarian bet that Trump isn't going to let a whole bunch of <laughs> <laughs> oil extractors in Oklahoma and Texas go bankrupt in an election year. And so you could, you could make the bet that he's going to pony up big time and throw a few billion dollars their way to bail them out and uh, just make a bet on, you know, more government socialised losses, but these guys survive uh, this experience. And what would you buy to back that bet? Oh, uh, you could do like any of them, really. You could do like, I think Occidental is the big one. Yeah, Occidental, uh, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, any of them. Trump loves them all. As long as they <laughs> pump oil and hate renewables, Trump loves them. <laughs> Why wouldn't you just go to Betfair and uh, bet on him to win the election? <laughs> yeah, true, true. It's a slightly easier also. bet. <laughs> I, actually, I actually listened to a podcast recently about a market, I think it's called Predict It or something, where it's kind of like you bet on uh, politics in the election, but it's like it moves like the stock market. And so any of these positions can trade between, you know, zero cents and one dollar and you can buy and you can, you know, hold it and you can trade yeah. it and then you can sell it later. So I'm thinking of getting into some polit political day trading. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, you, it's, basically a, it's a percentage <laughs> yeah. chance, right? So if it's like a 2% yeah, chance, yeah. you're buying it at two and you're selling it at 100 if they win. Or you, you, exactly. Yeah. So, so like you buy, you buy Trump will win the election. At, let's say that's trading. It's more likely than not, so it's uh, probably sixty cents. Close to, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Trump has a sex scandal or something, and it falls. It goes to eighty cents. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and you can go long or short. So it could be interesting. Maybe yeah. we'll do a podcast that, on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, alternative <laughs> investment. I think I want to trade yeah. that. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Maybe, trade, we, could, but what's maybe we could form a syndicate. Absolutely. I mean, with the amount of money you've made in the market, you can have a lion's um, yeah. oh, Guys, like it's, it's been awesome. I mean, I'm, like I've learned a lot even in the last 30 seconds. 
Um, <laughs> but there's one thing we need to do on this, and that is to check what socks you're wearing, because it would be remiss of me if we were talking about stocks and socks that you didn't show me your socks. So um, maybe we'll start with you, um, Alec, because you're, you know, uh, close <laughs> to last, me on the TV. Last time we filmed this, I uh, was wearing my Sydney Swan socks, uh, but unfortunately, I don't have them this time. So. <laughs> uh, I'm just I'm just wearing some normal wow, socks. Some this classics. Time. Yeah, yeah, classics. yeah. They always I, say the richer you get, the less you care about what you look like. So what can I say I made money in the market? <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you're actually wearing socks, Ren. What do you mean? Well, you generally just uh, have the same t-shirt and same pair of shorts, and you're not usually rocking a pair of socks. So. Good, no, to, see, good to see some you socks on. <laughs> I'm a changed man since I've been locked down. <laughs> Money's doing things to you, bro. Know, Money's doing know, things. Yeah. The more I lose you? my hair, the more, I, the more socks I buy. <laughs> Bryce, what about you, buddy? Matt, I'm, I'm also a bit disappointed to say, but I've just got the classic um, wow. whatever brand oh, that is. Adidas. I should know. But, um, Adidas. Yeah, the Adidas. Yeah. Um, Bit of a fitness vibe going on at the moment, yeah, but yeah. you know, wow, that's just how you I guys am. are like vanilla, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll give you, yeah, I'll give are you gonna show us yours? I got some pineapples. Oh, nice! Oh, there nice. you go. So, did you buy them specially for this? Uh, no, I bought them at Singapore <laughs> Airport actually. I won't be going back there soon. Um, <laughs> but I remember they probably them need the they probably need the revenue though, they need the sales. Yeah, well, if they online, I'd be ordering them some more. Um, you know, for this show, I need more socks. Clearly, I yeah, can't keep I wearing, wearing the dirty time. ones. Yeah. So is the know. rule is the rule for you on this show that every episode you need a different pair of socks? You know what? Like, I thought through it before I picked my socks. <laughs> I'm like, I think <laughs> I think if people time? if people catch you out wearing the same pair of socks in one of these videos, they should comment and uh, dislike the video. Or Matt, Matt should has come to and help me do my laundry. Pair of socks. <laughs> yeah. Or but. Matt should share his address and everyone can send him <laughs> their favourite pair of socks. <laughs> you know, I'm in a rough neighbourhood around here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anywhere in Australia is rough at the moment, except maybe where Alec is. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah but, yeah, guys, it's been an absolute good. pleasure. Uh, just, you know, amazing what you guys have achieved and both in the market and with equity mates and um, really, really excited to, you know, hopefully we can do this again, not, not, not re-record it again, but, uh, <laughs> but have you on again, it'd be great. No, likewise, always, um, always good to chat, Matt. And I think um, it, it would be worthwhile just doing a, a, giving a shout out to the free stock promo that you guys are running. Oh, I yeah. know there's been a, yeah. been a bit of chit chat in our group about it mm -hmm. and um, a bit of uptake. So, um, you know, we've got the, the code that can help our guys. And uh, if you just want to give a bit of a spiel on what you guys are offering, and um, that'd be helpful. Sure. I should definitely get you for head of marketing. Uh, <laughs> you're so much better than me. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, you know, poor Brian is like, you know, got to deal with me. I could, he could just report straight to you. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we've gone, you know, the whole thing about stake is giving people access to opportunities and really want to, allow them to explore the, what the US has to offer. And one of the things that happens is when you sign up for the first time and you fund your account within 24 hours, you get a stock of either Nike, Dropbox or GoPro. It's randomly chosen, all the rules are on the website. Um, but also if you refer a friend, you can both get a free stock. So if you know, Alec referred Bryce and Bryce funded, you know, any time that Bryce funds, Alec gets a free stock. But if you know, Bryce funded within 24 hours, they'd both end up getting a free stock. So. Uh, we just changed the referral program to make it a mutual award and make it easier for people to get into the market and see what stake has to offer. Um, so yeah, it's as simple as that. It's all there on our website um, and on our app. Just yeah, nice. Appreciate you yep. giving um, giving me a quick reminder. What about you guys? Anything <laughs> interesting you want to mention? Well, um, Matt, before missed? before Bryce gives us a plug, I got to ask you a question about this referral program because sure. there's a bit of a conspiracy theory going on in our discussion group. Oh, there's a lot of people receiving uh, Dropbox and GoPro shares. Not a yeah. lot of Nike shares, apparently. So, <laughs> are you are you hoarding all the Nike shares? I'm, I'm definitely not. Uh, <laughs> the, the percentage chance of Nike because of its price is a little bit lower than the other two, but you know, it keeps spinning. You never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll tell them. We'll tell them. <laughs> well, they can watch it and see. You know, and look, it's sure. we're transparent. You know, we've 
but it's all up there in the rules and um, you know, we're also giving, you know, if, if they want it, you know, as I said, we give it as many times as you want. So if you refer 20 friends, um, the chance is obviously higher. So just go nuts and you'll probably end up with a Nike stock. Well, hopefully you will. <laughs> I, I still think you should have one Berkshire Class A stock in yeah. there with a 0.001% chance yeah. of getting it. But it would, uh, it would be a big, uh, big And then state go out of business, yeah. Well, the problem is, and, and I'll be totally honest, it's a great idea. It just happens. If it happens in the first week, we're totally effed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so maybe the odds get bigger as, your, as time goes yeah. by. Maybe Hold I can on. be Bryce's 2IC of marketing. Yeah. <laughs> Look, the job's yours. If, as long as you've got enough socks for me to wear. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But just a shout out to our guys, if you're watching, to use Equity Mates as the referral code. Um, it just kind of helps us out in the referral process. Um, so when you're signing up, throw Equity Mates, all capitals, one word. Um, yeah. And that might help Alec buy a new pair of socks for next time we do this. <laughs> yeah, so full transparency, we, we send some, some money your way, um, not Nike stock. Clearly, you don't like Nike wearing Adidas socks. So. <laughs> Ren needs the cash. His liquidity position at the moment It's not very really good. So. Yeah. <laughs> Better than we, last, last time, time we recorded, though. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. It's because you've sold stocks, bro. <laughs> yeah. Look, maybe we should, instead of giving them a referral, like a reward, we should just give them a tip from you. Oh, Alex tip. Yeah. Uh, stock tip. Sure. Um, nah, you, I, you know, general None. advice only. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Look at you. <laughs> so good. Um, and is there anything on, on your side that you guys are doing interesting that you guys want um, the state community to, to know about? I mean, we're always doing interesting things, Matt. It's hard to pick one, but um, <laughs> no, nah, to be honest, I think it just, if um, you haven't listened to the show, uh, we've got a, a Get Started Investing series that uh, is a 12-part series all about the fundamentals of investing to really get you started in the markets and I guess the confidence that you need to get to get going. So no better time to start listening to that than, than now. Um, and then come and join us on, on the show and in our social channels and, and, and as part of the Equity Mates community. Um, it's a lot of fun and uh, if you like what you saw today then we've also <laughs> just recently launched a YouTube channel wow. up late uncut <laughs> Renners wears no shirt so is that, um, is that legit or not that's legit yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. is legit yeah, yeah. how yeah. good is that all yeah. right the um the rule is one beer one topic no editing so um the first person to finish their beer hangs up and then <laughs> we just upload it straight away. So Well, I was thinking yeah. about watching a Michael Jordan documentary on Netflix, but it's just been trumped. Don't don't yeah, worry about yeah, it, yeah. Matt. Don't bother about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's is that every night or how often's that? Nah, not Plus every a week night. at this stage. A couple of times a week, yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Well yeah. maybe we could play like virtual poker or something, but we'll keep our clothes on. <laughs> not bad. There's anything's I'd, possible. I'd, I'd love to play a hand of poker. Um, I know. Possible. I know that Alex got a lot of chips. So <laughs> he does. I do. I do, <laughs> and I'm very good at bluffing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe for next time. Um, and then last, last, last thing: uh, if you like the shirt that Bryce is wearing, uh, you can buy it on our website. You can't buy yes. that particular one. Although, if people want to make an offer on the the shirt off Bryce's back, we can we can entertain it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nice. So that's equitymates.com. That's it. Equitymates.com. Awesome. All right, guys, legends, thank you so much for your time and no. great to have you on. Likewise, Matt, always good to chat and uh, looking forward to our next Socks and Stocks if we get a bait again. <laughs> you will definitely get called <laughs> back, no doubt. <laughs> Thanks, fellas. Nice one. Bye. Thanks.